Okay, so the last lens I'm going to talk about is the light adjustable lens, or option four. And of the four, this is sort of the, I guess, newest lens tech uh, so far on the market. Uh, technically, there have been newer iterations of the torque lens and the multifocal lens, but those are really iterations of the same thing, whereas this truly is different technology, and it's incredible what we can do with the light adjustable lens. Um, I think in this area, we might be the only ones offering the lens. I'm not sure about that, but the reason that might be is because uh, you have to make a pretty substantial investment to be able to offer the light of the lens, but you know, our practice tries to pride itself on offering the latest and greatest, and we truly do believe this is it. Um, and so to explain what makes this lens so uh, unique, I wanted to first talk about the process of a standard lens to, so you can see how the light adjustable lens sort of turns the process around to be the most accurate of all four that I've listed. And so um, in a standard cataract surgery, we take measurements of the eye um, and then we pick up our lens that's based off formulas that are trying to predict where your eye is going to heal the lens implant to position and how your cornea is going to heal. And those formulas are pretty accurate, but they're not 100%. In fact, if you look at studies, they generally say that we are about 80% accurate in terms of getting within 0.5 diopters. Um, and that sounds pretty good, and it is, but it's not uh, great, right? That means one out of every five, we might be off by more than 0.5. Um, and once you get above that threshold, that's when patients will start noticing blurriness to wherever we set the target for that lens implant to be. Um, and that's in a healthy eye. If you have a history of LASIK, a history of RK, or some scar, or some really bad dry eyes, all of these numbers actually start going down in terms of accuracy. Now in the case of LASIK and RK, there are formulas we can use, other formulas that try and get that accuracy back up to that 80%, but generally speaking, we don't quite get there. And so um, that's where the light adjustable lens really shines, because it turns the sequence of treatment around a little bit. And to explain that, um, let's just talk about the light adjustable lens now. So the, the process early on is the same. We still take measurements on your eyes. We still try to calculate a general power to place into your eye. Um, and then we do the surgery. But we don't put all the prescription in right away. We just put most of it in there. And then we just let you heal, right? Those variables I just talked about, where it heals in, how your cornea heals. Well, usually in a standard lens surgery or standard cataract surgery approach, three to four weeks, we let you heal up. And at that point, we measure your eyes by doing a refraction. That's where we go better one, better two to determine what glasses prescription do we need to give you to make it 20, 20 the distance, as an example. <clears throat> well, with the light adjustable lens, we do the same thing. We wait three, four weeks, um, and we bring you back into the clinic, and we measure you after your lens has been healed in position and after your cornea has been healed. And we do that same refraction, we go better one, better two, to figure out what prescription you would need. But instead of giving you glasses for it now, we can actually take those numbers, put it into a light delivery system, and actually change the lens power while it's healed into your eye to give it the power it needs to give you the outcome you want. And so that's what makes this lens so accurate and so unique is that we can adjust the power of the lens after this, we've done the surgery and after it's been healed in your eye. And so this lens is really great for people that have a history of LASIK or RK. <clears throat> and it's also great for any patient who's really type A who uh, really wants to control their vision because the other great feature about this lens is that we can adjust it multiple times to make sure you like um, your vision before we lock it in. So let me explain that. Um, oftentimes with the light adjustable lens, the way I approach it is I set one eye for distance and one eye for mid-range. Um, so not near, I, I should be clear about that. I'm not talking about monovision, just a little offset from pure distance, if you will. Uh, and the, when we first put the lens implant in, we're actually off intentionally by a little bit. Then we let you heal up and we do the first treatment. And so oftentimes you'll hear me recommend to set one eye for distance and one eye just offset a little bit from that distance, just in a little bit. Uh, and the first treatment will be meant to give you that. And, um, uh, you, and you're welcome to choose both eyes at distance. It's just that I usually tell people to start off this way. And the reason I do that is that it gives you more range in your vision, right? Um, but the beauty is that after we've set that for distance in this offset a little bit, we then say go and walk around for a week, experience your vision. You know, we encourage you to do things like drive in, trying to work on your computer, all the things you're trying to minimize your need for glasses for. And you come back to us in a week and we ask you, hey, how do you like your vision? And you might say like, hey doc, this little offset's pretty cool. Can you give me more? Or you might say, hey, I don't like the offset. Just really, I just want both eyes set perfect for the distance. I just want that accuracy. I don't know what you'll say, but you may say something's my point. 
and whatever it is you say, we can change the lens again. We'll say, okay, you didn't love the, the offset. Let's go back just a flat out both eyes distance. Then we'll say, go walk around for another week again, do those same activities again, and come back to us. You may say, hey, Doc, you were right. I actually didn't realize how much more I could see if I had my eyes just offset a little bit. Go ahead and set it back again. And we went, we'll move that lens back up again. So the point that I'm making is that we can do three adjustments to this lens. And so you could do quote unquote, test drive your vision before we actually lock it in. And so once you're happy with it, then we do another light treatment to lock in the lens, meaning make it so it won't adjust again spontaneously down the road, if you will. And there's always two lockins just to be extra safe that the lens won't change once you're really happy with your vision. And at that point you're done. Um, meaning, you know, four or five years down the line, that lens is set, we can't adjust it again. It's just, uh, there's a period here where the lens is moldable, we're gonna do it to suit whatever it is you need. Now, the, I mentioned early on that I intentionally do miss out the gate. The reason we do that is that if we adjust the lens in a certain way, you do get this bonus depth um, in your vision. Now, I don't think the company markets itself that way, but it's something we're seeing in pretty much all of our patients that have chosen this lens. Um, and so that's another reason why I recommend doing distance in one eye and this offset mid-range for the other, because you end up seeing still a lot without glasses. Now, um, depending on where we set this mid-range point, you may still need cheaters for up close. Um, it, 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 it would entirely depend on how much offsetting we do and how much extra bonus you get. Uh, and so I, I do still tell patients to expect a possible or a likely need for uh, over-the-counter reading glasses. But the difference between this and the multifocal is that there is none of this glare halo spider webby thing around light sources. And you can have a mild wrinkle or mild uh, cornea abnormalities uh, and still get this lens and you're still gonna get a lot of range out of it. Um, the multifocal is still the lens I typically recommend if you want a ton of range without monovision. Um, but uh, if you're the type of person who just wants a lot of range, you can handle the occasional pair of cheaters, but you really want high quality vision, well then this is the lens for you. Um, the other thing I will note is that if you enjoy monovision, well this is gonna be a very accurate form of monovision, and in that scenario, you will not need glasses after surgery. Because um, one eye will be set perfectly for distance, and one eye will be set perfectly for near. And we had our patients that we've done monovision for, and they'll come back and say, I can see my nails really well right here, but I want to see it well right here. And so we made a small little adjustment back out to get it exactly where they want it, and then we locked it in, and they're off to the races. And so for this reason, um, you know, this practice really loves this lens because, you know, ultimately, you know you better than we can ever know you in the 30-minute uh, consultation. And so this takes the power of what your outcome is, it puts it in your hands. You effectively get to choose how you end up with this lens. Um, the one caveat I will note is that the way we adjust this lens implant is with a UV light source, and UV light is everywhere. And so part of what you pay for, the company gives you three pairs of glasses that are all UV blocking. One's basically a sunglass, two of them are clear, like one's a clear bifocal and one's just a full on clear blank that you can wear glasses underneath. But right when we do the surgery, you gotta wear one of the three um, until we've done the treatments and the lock-ins, and then you can ditch those UV glasses because they effectively pr uh, protect your lens from stray UV light molding your lens in a way we don't want until we do the treatments. Um, and that's the thing I'll say, there are additional treatments here. There's up to three treatments and two lock-ins, right? So a total of five additional potential visits. You know, some people may not have the desire to have additional visits after cataract surgery, and that's perfectly fair. You can do options one, two, or three instead. We can still try and achieve what you're looking for. But if you've got that um, availability in your schedule, well, gosh, this lens is uh, its pretty incredible, and the results so far have been pretty incredible. And so in a nutshell, those are the four lenses. Um, there's, of course, more details I can mention on each lens. And so if you've got a particular question, just ask me and uh, either my staff or, or myself are happy to walk you through it. And I hope this was helpful.